for the channel 7S26Simon. Today we're going to take a look at a really crazy machine that I've just uh, got root on and for uh, about five or ten minutes I didn't really understand what the hell was going on uh, at all. It took me a few minutes to fully grasp this one and it just goes to show that Sometimes when a box, this box is marked as easy slash it can, it, the, the author said it can be difficult if you go the wrong way. This was a really interesting box and it just goes to show don't skip easy boxes. M boxes that are marked easy or medium, some people skip them just because they're ego, I want to do difficult boxes. Guys, there's a lot to be learned from these kind of boxes. So I'm going to give you a walkthrough of this box and let's let's go through it, let's see. Uh, let's see how to do it. So if you're interested, if you go to Vulnhub and the box you want is called Empire Breakout. So the author says, as I said earlier, it's creative to be an easy box, but it can be medium if you get lost. I would probably say I was somewhere between easy and medium. I was somewhere in the middle because it was, yeah, it's 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 just a really good, interesting box. Okay, so I started off with an nmap command. And that came back and it gave me a couple of interesting ports. The, the ones that were most interesting were port 80 and this port here, which was for DNP. Now, I didn't know what DNP is and I'm still not massively familiar. Uh, but it turns out there's a web app running on the system. So first of all, I did a check for robots.txt. It wasn't there. So then I looked in the source code and it turns out, as you can see, there was indeed something here, which is obfuscated. I won't swear on the video, um, but basically this is uh, what it is. So if you paste it in here, Brain F is the thing. Uh, it comes back and it gives you a password of some sort. So my next thing was, okay, let's see where we can log in. So I decided to go over to port 20,000 and I got this error message. It said the server's running in SSL mode. So that means HTTPS is in place. As you can see, we don't have HTTPS here. Connection is not secure. So it made me think immediately, hey, there's definitely some sort of web app on this URL. And so there is. There's something called user min, which I've never seen before. I had a quick look around, uh, you know, to see what was available to us. And it turns out if you go down to, gives you some information, actually, Debian, Linux, etc. If you scroll down, it was on user min, go to login, command shell, you can execute a command. So you can run ls, execute command, and there's a user.txt, so you can do a cat, and you get a nice flag. Okay, so I run, as you can see, um, let me just move that window over, execute command, and you're able to get a nice web shell. So from here, let me just try this. Oops, sorry. Let me go back, um, execute command. And what I should have done actually was paste in this one, but it has, it seems to have Python three. So I just had to manually sort of add that in, do a copy and paste. And there we go. We've got a, we've got a shell of some description. Uh, there. Okay, so that'll do for what what I wanted to to achieve. So we can now see that cat user txt. We we've got access to the flag. Now, interestingly enough, there's something called tar. Now, this is how you compress files, etc. So I kind of figured that, hey, it's in this directory, it's it's got to have some sort of relevance. Uh, the next thing I did was actually, I for some reason, I don't know why, I just went over to var, uh, I think just over to var, and I was looking at some of the temp files, user min, and then something dawned on me to just do an ls, 
uh, L or A, which is going to do uh, list recursive, and then it's going to show hidden files with A. Um, let's just do backups for now. Why can't we do that? Oh, because we're in the wrong area. Uh, so ls l r a var backup back oops if I can spell it oh my god okay so I found this file which is old pass dot back now interestingly enough this file is owned by root and only root can read it so the next step was to go over to the temp directory and the reason we go over to temp for anyone wondering why why temp is because if we do an lsl on uh, the root the root directory here of the file system we can see that uh, where's temp there's temp temp is read write execute by every single user so what we can do if if we go back to temp we can use that tar because ls, if we do an ls, this is all about permissions, ls cyber. We can, anyone can execute tar. Uh, not as root, we're not, we're not, I don't, we're not actually running this file as root. We're not, it's not a sewage file, but we're running the file just in the context of ourselves. But we're going to, we're going to take that data I wish I had Microsoft Paint on here. Have we got any paint programs? Draw? No. Okay. What we're basically going to do, guys... In fact, let me draw this out. Online Paint Tool. That'll do. I just want to draw this out. Over on the left-hand side here, we've got a file. Okay? We can't open the file. Okay, it's got a red barrier. We can't access it. But over here, we can access this area here. So how about if we use our program? Let's put this in yellow. Why not yellow? How about we use our program that we've got access to in the middle? Let's just go back to green. We've got access to a program here called tar. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that file. Remember, we can't edit it right now. But we're going to take that file, pass it through tar. We're going to put it into an area that we can read, write, and execute. Then what we're going to do is we're going to extract the file. And don't forget, because we're still in an area that we're green, we can access all this area. Technically, we should be able to read that file, even though in this area, over in red, we don't have permissions to read. Does that make sense? We're taking a file that we don't have access to. We're putting it in an area that we do have access to. And then that gives us then the permission to extract the file. Let's see what we mean by this. Okay, so... Let's remind ourselves, over in var backups. Oh man, this is so annoying. ls, la, var backups. That is the file. This is the file in this red surrounding here. That's the file we cannot access. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that file somewhere that we can access. So let's go, let's uh, go over to temp. And let's basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a tar uh, CVF and we can call this whatever dot tar. It really doesn't make a great deal of difference. And we're going to say var backup. So everything in the backups folder, put it in a tar file. OK, create a tar file. OK. And we get some sort of weird kind of error message. And that would be because I have made a mistake. <laughs> because what I should have done, I should have said, go to home, cyber, tar, cvf, whatever, dot tar, var, backups. Okay. And basically, you can see here that this has now, this file that's in black here, it's put it 
here now in the area that we can access. So if I do an ls la, where are we? We're in temp. So there is whatever.tar. Okay, so we've got read access on this file now. Okay, so all we now need to do is essentially extract the file. So if we do a tar minus xvf whatever dot tar, you'll see that what has just happened, it's extracted the file to the var folder. It's created a var folder in temp. Okay, so can I... Am I able to write on this thing over here? Let's have a look. Uh, if not, it's not the end of the world. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, so here, this was our backups folder. And this had the old dot pass dot back in it. And what we've essentially done is we've copied that over. So now in this area, we've got backups. And we've also got old.pass.back. And what we're now going to do is extract it to extracted file. And that should mean that we've kind of used a, I guess, a vulnerability, really, to gain access to a file that we shouldn't have access to. So let's go into the var folder. Remember this is in PWD, this is in temp. Uh, let's go over to CD backups. LS. Where are we? PWD backups. LS minus A. Okay, and what you can now see is we can see that old dot pass file. And this time we've got read access to it. So if we do cat dot old, we can see we now get a password. Now just out of sheer curiosity, I'm just going to do an LSL var backups. Uh, sorry, LSL a, I keep forgetting the a, var backups. Okay, now take note of this because this is interesting. So here, once again, you can see this is in the actual var folder. It's 17 bytes, 749 October 20th, and it's owned by root, and the group is root. But here, we've got read and write access to it. It's owned by cyber, and we are cyber. That's our username. The bytes, 17, October 20th, 749. So it's the same file. Uh, and that's given us the password. So if we take a copy and we do an su to root, let's do a paste. And hey presto, we are uh, root. So let's do a cat on that file. And we get our final flag. You managed to break out from my system. Congratulations from uh, the author of the machine. So awesome. I uh, hope that kind of makes some sense. And there you go. There you have it. That's how you take a file that you shouldn't have access to and get access to it. So a bit of a crazy, weird vulnerability there that they created on this this system. Uh, but yeah, that's on Vulnhub and that's Empire Breakout. Really great room. Really enjoyed it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.